What's up, everybody? Rob Arnold here, back with another string changing episode, which I think you might find cool because this is a special guitar. Back with my friend George here. He's brought over a guitar that I haven't seen in, I don't know, almost 20 years. This is the Viper Baritone 300 that I used in Camaro's very first video, the split video. We had recorded that first album, Pass Out of Existence, on seven strings but I was already in my mind transitioning out of using seven strings and wanted a six string option. And ESP recommended these baritones, which is a, a longer scale and allows you to do lower tunings and it worked pretty well. I think uh, we did a couple tours, uh, Matt and I both using these Viper baritones, but then something happened. I ended up giving you this guitar because, what's the story, Matt borrowed a guitar? Um, the first ever Camira tour that you guys did, I. For the life of me, I can't remember where you guys were going, but um, you needed a spare backup guitar. At the time, I had an ESP Horizon, which is um, very similar to the shape of your guitar, correct? Um, yeah, the H-Series, I believe, it's, instead of having that flat top, it's got more of that contour yeah, top. Yeah, it had a contour top. Um, it had a humbucker and single coil configuration. And um, what happened to that guitar, Rob? Uh, I believe, was, was, Matt, was Matt borrowing it? Was it Hagar? I, I, I don't know if it was. So, somebody was borrowing it and some, whoever was responsible for it left it at the show or whatever. We just came back to the rehearsal spot and a few days later, George is like, hey, I'm gonna pick up that guitar and it's just nowhere to be found. So um, again, that was way early on, probably before our ESP endorsement. So then years later to kind of make it up for him, um, I ended up giving him this Viper 300, which I've talked about this guitar a couple times in the past, and I always thought it was a Viper 400. So when he brought it over and I opened up the case today, I was surprised to see that it's a, a 300. I, I, I didn't know that. Um, did And Matt also gave you a Viper 2, which... Um, I actually purchased that off of him. You purchased that off of Matt? Yeah, okay. which was um, a cannibalized Viper. Right. Um, it was missing a lot, and you and I were able to piece from your stock of parts. We were able to get that guitar back in order and it's beautiful now. Yeah, yeah, it's just like new. I mean, again, it had been cannibalized. We took parts off it for years, just things that we needed here and there. And um, yeah, about a month ago, George and I rebuilt that right here. I think I just posted some photos on Instagram and stuff like that. Didn't really make a video out of it. Um, but in this case, he's brought over this Viper that we're just gonna do a simple, quick restringing on. And I thought, why not turn on the cameras? talk about it and restring it. So we're gonna get started. This particular one has Spurzels here, which if I'm not mistaken, I don't believe it came with Spurzels originally. I think it had just regular, like, like gosh, or ESP tuners probably. And I think we ordered Spurzels just to put them on, which I think makes things easier. You wanna flip it and get a good yeah, shot yeah, of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let's, let's, let's take a see. good look at those. Yeah can see the holes have been filled in and I have a feeling that ESP did that because they look nicely done and uh, I think I think when when we ordered this guitar I said I wanted to have Spurzels on it um, you know which just just makes it easy what the Spurzels are it's just a locking system here this one's locked all the way out there hmm, that, that might need to be replaced uh, instead of having to wind the string around the the tuning knob on the other side there you can just stick it through tighten this down and it just makes string changing quicker so George says this has a fresh battery, so we're not we're not gonna change that, but that's always part of my string changing process, making sure the battery is cool. Either putting a little piece of tape on the battery with the date that you replaced it, that way years go by, you know when that battery was put in there. I also like to, since this isn't my guitar, I'm not gonna do this, but at the end, we are gonna put a sticker on the back here. I would put a sticker on the back with the date, the string type, gauge, and the tuning that this guitar was set in. Again, just a helpful tip that a lot of you heard me preach in the past so that you know what strings you had on here and when they were changed last. And that's great for consistency and keeping your guitar in tune because you're not changing gauges all the time, stuff like that. Now, because we have a fixed bridge here, it is a lot easier to change string brands, gauges, and tunings whenever you like. But 
a lot of my guitars are Floyd guitars and the best thing is consistency. So I still even try to let that mindset flow over into guitars like this. That being said, um, I typically like to change one string at a time as well. But every once in a while, like this one, where I wanna clean up the fretboard and get it into the nooks and crannies, we're just gonna pull all the strings off, get it all cleaned up, put fresh strings on, stretch them out, tune it up, give it a strum, see what happens. What do you think? Let's do this. So with these spurzels, you can see there isn't much wind around there at all. Just basically have to loosen them. I loosen them so that they're kind of straight. So when I just, when I go to tighten this, you can just pull straight out. And then I like to put the eyelet hole back so it's facing me. If I were standing in the position over here where, where I'm gonna be tuning from, I like to have them facing me. It just makes it easier when you go back to put the string through. Now, Rob, did you pick this color? Um, yeah, I'm sure there were choices available and I've always been a fan of blue and this particular finish is a metallic blue, which I think is super sick. Get a close up on that and you can see those sparkles in there. It's actually a very cool color because most of the time it looks black because it is so dark. Yeah. So but yeah, I love that metallic. Easy pull here. All right, let's get this guy cleaned up. And what's the uh, pickup configuration in this, Rob? Dual 81s. And around this time when I was playing this guitar is where I kind of started realizing, why do I even need that neck pickup? Now, if I had a different pickup in there, like a lot of times a typical configuration with EMGs is an 81 in the bridge and an 85 in the neck. I think that's like maybe what Hammett likes. And so the only use for that, me personally, is if you switch to the clean channel, I will agree that the neck pickup sometimes sounds uh, quite a bit better. Uh, I'm not one of those soloists that switches to my neck pickup when I do certain passages or phrases and stuff like that. I just, just not my style. But I, obviously I see a, a ton of players that like to do that. They go to some part they want to sound uh, a little bit, uh, you know, bolder and wider. They'll switch to that neck pickup there. So no Ingve uh, playing for you, Rob? No Ingve playing for me, no. not uh, The capabilities is where my limitations lie. <laughs> So, uh, I think that that's the case for uh, most people. Probably. Ingve is a phenomenon. But again, so then I just, in my guitars, I just started eliminating that neck pickup just because I just didn't have a use for it, you know? That's really the only reason. And I've gotten a lot of questions about that, and it's really just because I just don't need it, so. Now, this is your typical um, touring setup for straps, correct, Rob? Uh, yes, on all of our guitars, as soon as we'd get them, we'd put these DiMarzio clip lock straps on. And uh, a big plus for that is that they're all just interchangeable so easily. So our particular setup, when we'd be touring, we'd have four wireless packs. You know, if anything were to happen or you needed to do a quick guitar change, my tech would come up from behind me and hold the guitar and I could just go pop, or I would hold the guitar and he would just go pop at the two clip points. And then you could pop a new one in if you needed to do it that way. Like I was saying though, we'd always have extra wireless packs with us and guitars, fortunately, were in that position. So it was much easier to just switch, swap out a guitar. But there were certainly cases where you needed to just pop those off real quick. And it's a lot easier than dicking around with the, the strap button and pulling off a strap. And a lot of the time, those typical straps, those that hole gets stretched out. And so just, and, and the, the, the DiMarzio clip locks too are super strong. You know, and back in the day when we were young and had a lot of energy, we do a lot of <laughs> ju jumping on stage. And these things always held up where it determined that we needed these because typical straps would just break on us, you know, so we needed something stronger. And so I've been using these DiMarzio clip lock straps forever. Now this guitar's uh, neck through, correct? Yeah, I believe yeah. it's, I, I believe it's just one piece, maybe they'd say. Yeah. Certainly doesn't seem to be any indication that. It's a glue on or anything? Yeah, I think it might just be a one piece guitar. There might be a more technical term for that, but let me skip this little area. 
Oh, because the bridge just came off. Oh, that's why. <laughs> See, that's why it's a good time every once in a while to get in there. You never know what you'll find. Gross ass sweat and skin from years prior. Okay, I'll do that again after everything's put back together, but I like to start with a clean guitar. Just feels good, feels right. Okay, where do those bridges go? There's this one. There's that piece. This one here, we're going with some. A lot of time, the yeah, it goes there. Until a string gets in there, it's going to fall out. These are some DR high beams. This is a custom set that I had put together, 11 through 52. That has a 20 wound in there, which I prefer. I think a typical 11 through 15, 52 set comes with an, maybe an 18 plane. Perhaps one other number, but I asked to uh, get these because these are the gauges that I like that I've been using for years. And again, a lot of my guitars are set up like this, so I just like to keep things consistent. And um, I'm loving these DRs. They sound great. Last a fortnight. A proper fortnight. See, it helps to have a, a friend here that can hold the bridge in until you get to string through. Okay, now what I said about uh, having the, the thing facing you is that so it's ready. Actually, what I wanted to explain was on a normal tuning peg, I've got the hole facing me there, on a normal tuning peg, how I'd string this is, is I'd go around once, holding this down, and then through the hole, and the string comes out on the other side on top of the string that's wrapped around. And then I'd pull that tight, and that's why I have them facing me. But with spurzels, you don't need uh, to wrap around once. You just go through, go ahead and back that shot off a little bit. You get your length to how you want it. I'm gonna leave about, about enough there to where I think once I lock it and starts turning it, that it'll go around maybe once. Okay, so I think that's probably about good. So yank that up, you keep it in position. Tighten down the spurzel there. Now that thing's not going anywhere, and that's the beauty of spurzels. You don't have to wrap around, it's not going anywhere. Where were we tuning this to again, George? B flat. B flat. Domination, some morbid angel. Obviously that's a lot higher than the B flat right now, but we're gonna give it plenty of stretches, which is gonna bring it down. I like to hold here at the saddle, lift up like that. When I'm lifting with my fingers, then I push down with my thumb. So that's how I'm stretching it out. Again, I'm keeping it here because sometimes if you pull out too much, it can slip out of the saddle. And I don't want to put a bunch of extra stress on the saddle as well, or the, the contact point where the string is touching the saddle. So I just hold my finger there. Again, lift up like this for a stretch, push down for a greater stretch, and move it along the neck all the way as far as I can go, and give this a little guy, boom, 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 boom. And I'll keep doing that as I go along, string by string. So every string that I put on, I will stretch all the strings that are already on there again, so by the time, and the, the thicker strings, the wound strings down here need more stretching than the thinner strings. So by the time I get to the thinner strings, the thicker strings have been stretched quite a bit, and you'll be ready to play in tune more quickly. Plus, on the thinner strings, you run more of a risk of breaking them, correct, Ref? For sure. So, yeah, you got to be a little more ginger with them when you're doing all the stretching on there. And like I said, they require less stretching as well. Wrapping these in the same direction, around this way, counterclockwise, on a headstock like this, counterclockwise on your bass strings, and clockwise on your treble strings. You'll see when we get the, in there. We'll get a nice shot of that, and you'll see how everything looks just clean and tidy. Now, the major benefit of the Spurzels is just speed, correct, Rob? Is the speed of changing your strings? I would say that that it's it's speed and just an ever extra level of protection is not the right word, but locking that string into place so that there's no slippage. A little security. Yeah, yeah, a little extra security, but pretty much, yeah, it just makes it nice and nice and easy to be able to stick that in there and tighten it down. One thing I didn't mention here is as I'm tightening, I like to keep my finger holding this down like that so you get a nice even wind. Now, 
Now, do any of the guitars you're currently using have Spurzels on them, Rob? I'm pretty sure that all my guitars with uh, with Floyd's have Spurzels. You know, which is kind of unnecessary because there's a locking nut, but it's just a little more, but more for, security. But for when you were touring, that was a benefit. Uh, yeah, I suppose, but how do you mean? For speed of changing the strings, because how often were you guys changing your st strings on tour? Every night, every night uh, we'd we'd have the text put, or yeah, every day during the day, the text would put fresh strings on. Um, so you were looking out for the text. Yeah, yeah, that they may disagree, <laughs> but uh, but you know, in my opinion, fresh strings sound the best. You know, you don't have to worry as much about breakage, anything like that. Um, but that's why stretching out the strings so much is so important, so you can stay on tune on stage every once in a while. These things fight you to get in there. We'll get her, there she is. Give yourself a little slack there. Tighten it down. I think this, that might be that bad one. Oh, no, that's good. Okay, so again, holding that down. I pull it up like that with this. Hold it down with my index finger. Again, if it were just like this and I go to wrap, the wrap would go maybe from the top and wouldn't be as even, but holding it down there, you're controlling how the string is gonna wrap. And again, on this side, first one through three, we're going clockwise. Four down, two to go. Now, why do you prefer four round wound strings, Rob? Most packs, the G string is not wound. It's what's called plain. It doesn't have any winding around it. And I've, I've explained this in the past, and the best way I can I can say it is that to me, a plain G string is has a little more of a squareness to it rather than a total roundness. I think that the wound G is faster. So when you're tremolo picking there, ah. it's faster on my pick. You know, it just it just I like the way the pick glides across it. Where a couple times where I've either inadvertently had a plain string put on there or perhaps strings weren't available, a wand string wasn't available, whatever like that. It just felt square and it just wasn't as fast to me. So I prefer that that wound there. I'd like to hear someone else's reasoning on that as yeah. well. Like a guy like Matt, he doesn't care. He just he just takes a plane. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? He doesn't do as many leads or anything, you know? So maybe that has something to do with it as well. But obviously if they offer it, that means other guys have reason behind it as well. So wouldn't mind hearing. Let me know in the comments below if you have a preference over a wound or plain G string. All right, let's see where we're at. Okay. Yeah, so we're going B flat with this guitar, which is a weird tuning, uh, in my opinion, but I think maybe Morbid Angel Domination is also that, but they use a seven string. Also a favorite tuning of like Swedish, death metal and tuned. Mm. That's why I wanted this tuning. Okay, so got it pretty close here. Whatever, regardless tuning you're going for, get it close. I like to tune up to pitch, so if you overshoot it with the tuner, you're sharp, then go back down below pitch, and then come back up to it so that you're putting that tension on the string rather than relieving tension and allowing it to flop around a little bit more. With these guys now, um, we're pretty close there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off these here because everything went well. I like to leave them till the end in case there's a problem, but no problems here. I'm gonna push these down. I like to cut them as close to the tuning knob as possible. So push it back down, push them down. Nice and close. And then we're gonna use the wire cutters carefully to push them down even more. That way you're not getting those little punctures in your fingers that everyone loves. Push it down, push it down. Fairly out of the way. Cool, got those snipped. Got it pretty well in tune here. Give it another polish. 
and uh, let's give it a strum. Here we go for the riffing test, seeing what this old BB-300, it still feels good, sounds like in a B-flat. <laughs> Sounds pretty heavy. Sounds pretty rocking. Nice to play you again, old boy. Let me give you back to your new owner, though. Appreciate everybody hanging out, watching another string change here. Thanks so much for all your support, guys. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other guitar maintenance tutorials I have here on the channel. Make sure you're subscribed, and we'll see you in the next one.